Coming up on today's show, Porsche unveils the all-electric Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo and sets it up as an electric all-rounder, Tesla gets chased by both Ford and Volkswagen, and Rivian's latest job posting suggests that it's getting ready to start working on a solid-state battery for use in its EVs. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to TEN, Transport Evolved News. It's been another jam-packed week and I had a lovely time meeting all of those who were interviewing for the position of social media manager here at Transport Evolved. It was lovely to meet you all. This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Stick around until the end to hear about the EAA's exciting new partnership that could maybe help you make the switch from fossil fuels to electric. We start today with the official launch of the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo, the more butch, adventure-friendly version of the Porsche Taycan. Unveiled midweek, the Taycan Cross Turismo has adaptive air suspension, all-wheel drive, and more than 1,200 litres, or 42.4 cubic feet, of luggage space. Like the Taycan, it will be available in 4, 4S, Turbo and Turbo S variants, with similar performance specs to the Taycan that it shares a platform with. As you might expect, as a large, all-road, expensive Porsche, the price won't be cheap. Inside EVs had a go at specking one this week and stopped at about 240,000 US dollars because that's bonkers. But if you have the money, enjoy, because if this is as good as the Taycan, the best driving EV out there to date, as far as I'm concerned, it'll be worth every single penny. Also unveiled this week was the all-new Volvo C40 Recharge. Based on the same CMA platform as the Volvo XC40 Recharge and Polestar 2, the C40 Recharge has a lower roofline than its sibling, but has a similar kind of performance. Range is just a little further, 2 miles more at an expected 210 miles or 338 kilometers. Starting from 55,000 US dollars or equivalent, the C40 Recharge isn't affordable for most people, but frankly, it is a lot more affordable than that Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. The C40 reveal event also marked Volvo's commitment to go 100% electric by 2030, and according to sales data published this week, it is well on its way. One quarter of all Volvos sold last month had a plug. Volkswagen officially added its longest range ID3 variant to its online configurator this week, and in doing so, gave everyone a rather nice surprise. You see, when Volkswagen originally unveiled the ID3, it said that its longest range variant, which has an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack, would only be available as a four seater and not be able to have a panoramic glass roof because doing so would push the vehicle over its maximum allowable weight. But this week, it unveiled all three 82 kilowatt hour variants, one of which, surprise, surprise, has five seats. It's not clear how Volkswagen managed to engineer this new solution, but for those who had put off buying the longest legged ID3 because they thought it only had four seats, I guess this is great news indeed. Tesla is. Without a shadow of a doubt, the world leader in electric vehicles, both in terms of technology and in terms of sales volume. But this week, a new teardown report from UBS Group AG suggests that Volkswagen is rapidly catching up. The report, which focused on the technology underpinning the Volkswagen ID3, not only favorably compares it to some of Tesla's vehicles, but says one day it could be competitive against Tesla in the marketplace. Analyst Patrick Hummel, who led the team carrying out the reverse engineering teardown, called the ID3 the, quote, most credible EV effort by any legacy auto company so far, end quote. While Volkswagen had its fair share of teething problems ahead of the ID3 launch, so much so, in fact, that it was scrambling to fix software bugs right up until the start of deliveries, this validation suggests that, as Volkswagen promised, and many in the industry scoffed at, it is finally truly serious about EVs. Sticking with the Tesla competition, another global market analyst, this time Morgan Stanley, said this week that Ford's first long-range electric car, the 2021 Ford Mustang Mark E, is selling so well that it's actually stealing some of Tesla's market share. 
According to Morgan Stanley, while battery electric vehicle sales grew by nearly 40% last year versus a total US automotive market drop of 5%, Tesla accounted for 69% of that market last year versus 81% from the year before. Meanwhile, the Mustang Mark E accounted for nearly 100% of that 12% change in Tesla's market share. I know some people will look at this as FUD or negative news, but actually I think it's good news because it shows that there's more choice in the automotive marketplace than there was, and the market is most definitely big enough for many different car companies to coexist. As you'll probably know if you're a regular, we've been following the ongoing developing story of battery fires with both the Hyundai Kona EV and the Chevrolet Bolt EV. Last week, Hyundai had confirmed a global battery recall after a previous software update failed to correct the problem and stated that the issue was caused by improper alignment of the battery components during cell manufacture. This week, we learned more that the fault lay with the anode tab, not the separator between anode and cathode, that previously and vocally discussed suspect. This new piece of news certainly clears things up a lot, but it makes it 10 times worse for General Motors, which had previously stated a software fix would solve the problems with the Chevrolet Bolt because it used a different separator to the Kona EV. Now, who knows? But with regard to the Kona, it's been reported LG Energy is expected to foot 70% of the 900 million US dollar global recall cost. Ouch. Aside from being busy with the whole SN10 flights, Elon Musk was busy on Twitter this week, sharing details of Tesla's progress with its full self-driving rollout for all hardware-equipped, autopilot-capable cars. First of all, Musk confirmed that after many, many pushbacks, Tesla expects to have full self-driving available as a subscription for customers by the second quarter this year. Reiterating that it would be better long term to buy full self-driving at the point of vehicle purchase rather than do it per month, Musk followed up a few days later by stating that Tesla is readying a wider rollout of full self-driving beta when version 9 is ready for rollout, which apparently will be next month. Yeah, you know that thing when I film a show and then the news changes? That's happened. It's Friday evening, Elon Musk has just gone on Twitter to announce that Tesla is opening up FSD beta applications and it's created a bit of a storm. So if you are somebody who wants FSD beta on your Tesla, well, maybe now's the time to go and see if Tesla will let you in. There's been a lot of respondents. Back to the show. Tesla's over-the-air software update system has become the gold standard for vehicle updates and bug fixes in the auto industry, and many other automakers are working hard to follow in Tesla's tire tracks, even if many of those promised over-the-air update systems aren't working quite as they were promised to. But now Ford, whose Mustang Mark E has over-the-air software update functionality, is taking another leaf out of Tesla's book by rolling out a beta software update for a subset of Mustang Mark E owners. It's a way of testing the over-the-air software update system before a wider system rollout and means Ford can make sure owners report positive experiences before pushing it fleet-wide. If you're a Mustang Mark E owner, you might just be about to get an invite to join in the beta program. With battery pack capacity options of 105, 135, and 180 kilowatt hours, Rivian has some of the largest battery pack options planned for any production electric vehicle today. At the moment, those battery packs use a conventional lithium ion battery chemistry, but a slew of new job listings for Rivian's Palo Alto research facility suggests that might not always be the case. At the current time, there are five different job vacancies at Rivian's Manufacturing Engineering Division with a specific focus on designing, engineering, testing, and commercializing solid-state battery cell chemistries. While the job description states that successful candidates will have to work with Rivian's technology partners, which suggests that it may not be designing those cells in-house, it is certainly a very exciting development. And if Rivian goes solid state, well, we can look forward to faster charging and even larger battery capacities. And now it's time for short shorts. 
As part of its reveal event for the C40 recharge this week, Volvo confirmed that it would be taking its electric vehicle sales 100% digital. While this is a great way of dealing with poorly trained dealers by eliminating them completely, it could also set up some barriers for those who aren't tech savvy. A quartet of motorcycle companies, Piaggio, KTM, Honda and Yamaha, have all set up a consortium to develop standardised batteries for electric two-wheelers. Ultimately, the consortium is looking to develop swappable batteries to enable you to stay on the road without stopping to recharge. A new study by Transport and Environment in Europe has concluded that if you consider the raw materials that go into making an electric vehicle versus the raw materials used in the lifetime of an internal combustion engine car, the EV ultimately uses fewer natural resources. We'll be breaking this down next week, so keep your eyes peeled for that video. LG Energy and General Motors are progressing nicely with construction of the Ultium battery facility in Lordstown, Ohio, but this week we learned that the two companies are already looking to build a second facility in the US to expand their battery production. Watch this space. India says it's ready to offer massive incentives to Tesla if it's to establish a new gigafactory there. The Indian government has stated that it wants Tesla to actually build cars in India for the Indian market using a local workforce rather than importing them from China. Massachusetts startup Spark Charge, which apparently was on ABC's Shark Tank way back when, is readying a new service designed to bring by the kilowatt hour charging to customers. It'd operate like a gig service you order through your phone, a bit like getting Grubhub or a Lyft. After Peugeot, Citroen and Fiat Chrysler merged last year, things have changed a lot at the newly born Stellantis. And apparently the company is going full out for EVs, with the new company's CEO stating that, quote, we are going full throttle on battery electric vehicles and noting a rapid shift to all electrics. Welcome to the party at last, Stellantis. Sondor's Motors has announced that its low-cost $5,000 Metacycle will hit the market earlier than previously promised. Development is going so well, in fact, that it says deliveries will start in the third quarter of this year, not the fourth. I hope it can meet its expectations. Hitachi Zonsen has developed a new solid-state battery, which it says is the highest capacity of any solid-state battery on the market today. It's rated at one amp hour of capacity and can operate at temperatures ranging between negative 40 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. A week after Hyundai unveiled the Ionic 5, a video appeared online showing the Ionic 5 in the wild, charging at a DC quick charging facility in Germany. It was shown to be charging at 150 kilowatts at 80% SOC. It proves the vehicle is real, but sadly I haven't been given permission to share the video with you. Sorry. Meanwhile, a Kia CV prototype, and I am also afraid I don't have rights cleared images of that either, was spotted rapid charging at 175 kilowatts in Europe with a 43% state of charge. It shows how Hyundai Kia's new cars will conform compared to the previous generation. General Motors is set to launch a new digital tool in collaboration with Techion this week that will be used to help dealerships to sell more Bolt EV and Bolt EUVs. Ultimately, the same tool will be used by GMC and Cadillac when their Hummer EV and Cadillac Lyric ultimately go on sale. Mercedes-Benz has officially confirmed that the EQE electric sedan will get its reveal in September this year. It's based on the same EVA platform as the Mercedes-Benz EQS sedan. It'll most likely cross shop against the Tesla Model S. Volkswagen has confirmed that its first Project Trinity vehicle, the next step on for its ID program, will launch in 2026 and will be a long-range, super-fast charging sedan. It teased a silhouette of the unnamed car and says it will be capable of level 4 autonomy. The London Electric Vehicle Company has announced that its VN5 commercial van, which is based on the taxi cab made by the same company, will come with a full year of free rapid charging using the BP Pulse charging network. It's a range extended EV and will be a hit in London. The US Transportation Department has confirmed that it will be examining the initial impact of the recent trade ruling against SK Innovation, a decision which bans it from selling and making EV batteries in the US. The decision could be reversed if it's deemed too impactful by the current administration on its goals of transitioning the US fleet to electric vehicles. Tesla has launched a new social media platform called 
Engage Tesla, that it says will be a home base for Tesla owners to talk to the company. However, as part of this, it's also killing its Tesla forum. It's not clear what the new platform will do that its predecessor did not. FedEx has announced that all of its trucks will go electric by 2040. It's all part of the company's push to be carbon neutral in the same time frame. By 2025, half of all new fleet purchases will be electrics. And by 2030, it's aiming to buy 100% EVs. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Electric air taxi company Volocopter has successfully completed its latest round of funding, a Series D financing round which saw it pocket 200 million euro. This round of funding welcomed BlackRock, Avala Cap. This round of funding welcomed BlackRock, Avala Capital, Atlantia SPA, Continental AG, NTT, and Tokyo Century to Volocopter's already impressive list of investors, which already includes some pretty big names, including Geely and Daimler. Volocopter says it will use the funds to accelerate its plans to bring fully autonomous air taxi services to market around the world. So far, it's committed to an air taxi service in Singapore, the US and the UAE, as well as proposing using the Volocopter as an emergency services vehicle. Right now, tests are undergoing, and I think it will be a while before we see these in every city. But air taxis are finally starting to look like a commercial reality, or certainly more so than they were before. And finally, you know, if you watch this show, that I love myself some weird and wonderful EVs. In my time, I've driven anything from a tiny three-wheeled city car to a G-Wiz, a super rare Volkswagen Golf made by Volkswagen in the 1980s, and of course, a whole load of DIY converted and modified vehicles. But I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this. A three-wheel, all-electric, I don't even know what to call it, motorhome, RV, 10-ton wheels. The folks over at Electrek have been doing a feature once a week on weird vehicles you can buy on Alibaba, and this week it was this crazy thing. I have very little to tell you about it. It is superbly underpowered. Think 25 miles per hour maximum speed, and it can be yours from around six and a half thousand US dollars. Would you want it? Probably not. I mean, in one of the shots of the short video on the Alibaba site, you can see rust developing on the hinge of a brand new vehicle. Mmm, quality stuff there. Quality. And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. The EAA can help you find someone near to you that you can chat to about making the switch to electric, help you become an EV educator, and point you in the direction of local monthly meetups, virtually of course, that you can attend. And if you become a member, you'll have access to clean energy and EV loans that could help you make the switch to electric today. Find out how by heading to electricauto.org. I would love it if you'd comment and subscribe to this channel, as well as consider supporting us using one of the links below. We are expanding our team and it's a super exciting time for you to share your support. There's also a link below to our Discord chat room, which is free to join, so please give it a go if you'd like. And don't forget to check out our Redbubble TE merch store. I'll be back next week, but until then, enjoy the rest of your weekend, stay safe, and keep evolving.